Welcome back to Jersey Matters. We continue our conversation now with Patrick Murray, director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute. When the Democratic National Committee was deciding which polls were credible enough to use as a requirement to get into the debates, Monmouth University was named as one of those polls, so congratulations Thanks. on that. So it gives more importance to the poll when you're polling these Democratic candidates. Yeah. For instance, Cory Booker. Right, yeah, and there was a lot of pressure because the, the bar was so low that we ended up having to poll 24 candidates and make it, it's, it's an editorial decision. But Cory Booker. And that that, that yeah. adds some expense, doesn't it? No, no, not expense. It's just there's a difficulty there because who's paying attention to one candidate, let alone 24? But Cory Booker is one of those candidates that we've found fascinating all along. Thought from the very start that he would be doing a little better than, than he is, certainly. Everyone thought that. Yeah. So, you know, at this point, he's somewhere between 1% and 3%, depending on which poll, which state you look at. And what's fascinating about him is that his favorability numbers are high. He's among the highest favorabilities um, in, in the field when you ask Democratic voters who they like. He's just not converting those voters to... Um, to, to the, him being their first choice. Now, I spent time, and I do this all the time, I went up to Iowa, I went to New Hampshire, I t saw all, I, I've seen all the top candidates in action. I've um, talked to their voters, I've talked to voters who are undecided, trying to get a, a beat on that, and um, Cory Booker was certainly one of them. Cory Booker has the most visceral, positive reaction from audiences when he speaks to them of any of the candidates out there except for maybe Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, but Booker's in a much different way. He's get, he, get, he brings people to tears when he does his stump speech. I mean, it's amazing. And you have people walking out of there and think, yeah, I, I really like him, I really like him. But I think what happens is they wake up the next morning and, and listen to what he's saying and look ahead to the, to the, to the um, 2020 election against Donald Trump and say, you know, I like him, but he's more of a cheerleader leader than a quarterback. Really? Yeah, I think that's the, the calculation that I get when I talk to these people. They love I mean, absolutely love him uh, when they see him. And as you know, retail politicking in Iowa, New Hampshire is where it's at. That's where you get your momentum. He's absolutely one of the best at it. But it's not the conversion. And I think it's because it's not quite the right fit for the times, what his message is. He's somebody that everybody wants on their team, which means we could be talking vice president. Uh, for about him, but not necessarily leading the team in this particular environment. And I think that's like kind of what's caught everybody off guard. So when I talk to political operatives in Iowa and New Hampshire, and I talk to my fellow pollsters, and I talk to any people who follow these elections and how these things work, I think one of the big foot, it might be a footnote to 2020, but one of the big head scratchers of this election will be, why wasn't Cory Booker doing better? And it seems like he, and you tell me, you're the one who would know this, it seems like he's doing worse. It seems like when yeah. he first announced there was some well, excitement, well, every time he's got down to 1% yeah. all the time. But whenever, whenever anybody first announces, there's always a bump, and his bump wasn't huge when he did it. So he's not too far But it's been a while away. now. I mean, yeah. isn't he leveling but he's been, off? No, he's been consistent. He's been 1%. really consistent between 1% and 3%. Uh, maybe when was the last time he was 3%? Uh, that was just recently, but again, in the early states. He's getting 3% in Iowa, New Hampshire, okay, and, and South Carolina. That's where he's getting the 3%, not nationally, but in those states where it matters, as we know. That's where he, but, but the feeling is, why isn't he getting, why isn't he up there among the top four or five candidates? When you look at how the campaign operates on the ground, that's the head scratcher that I think. Now, if, if he ends up somehow being the, the VP pick, he won't be a footnote. But if he doesn't, then that will be the footnote to 2020 is why wasn't Cory Booker doing that? Is there just an inability at this time to change direction or to change message or would it look bad? I mean, they must look yeah. at the same numbers you have. Yeah, I don't think there's, there's, there really isn't anything that they can do. Uh, their message is their message. It fits for their candidate. It works. Voters absolutely do respond to that message. But when they weigh their options, they said that message might not be the right message for this That's particular time. So he's, he can't change. The only thing that can change is, is if the environment around him changes. So if there's a stumble by the, one of the front runners, and or the environment changes around Donald Trump, and his message then becomes much more relevant, or uh, people see it as a more effective message looking into 2020, there's nothing he can do. I mean, at this point, he has to continue. He's got the money now to continue into Iowa, New Hampshire. He can't change what he's doing. He can only hope for the environment around him to change. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Well, that happens all the time. That's something that we, we see a lot of our 
It's Enthusiasm like doesn't match numbers? Right, or that the, the, the candidate seems like a, a great candidate on paper, it seems like a great candidate when they're out there in the field, but they just don't gel with the times in which they're running. You know, they, it might be a better candidate in a different time. Give me a comparative candidate. Um, you know, let's say like somebody like, um, uh, like a Bill Bradley, who was, who was generating a lot of enthusiasm when he ran against Al Gore in 2000, raising a lot of money, um, looking as an alternative, but when, you know, when Democratic voters were saying, well, well, let's stick with the guy who we already know who's in, who's it was in just office. just dull, too. Right. I mean, I've, I've covered right. some of Bill Bradley's right, run. Right. Yeah. You see, you had two dull guys there, but if you had a wider field, then, then Bill Bradley might have done better. Um, you know, and so uh, there are, over time, um, you know, it just it happens. I mean, it, it, it has to be right fit. Everything has to come together. When you think about the fact uh, that only uh, 44 individual, individuals were ever president, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, you're right. it it's, really, it's it, very difficult to put yeah. everything together to make that happen. Yeah. And I all, already feel bad that I called Bill Bradley dull because I like the man so yeah. much. I also covered John Glenn and talk about dull. Thank you so much. I really appreciate <laughs> you being here. I know you're busy. Patrick Murray, director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute. Jersey Matters continues right after this. When we come back, October is Bullying Prevention Month, and we will show you a program that is in the forefront in the fight against bullying when Jersey Matters comes right back. <laughs> 